So with, uh, with, uh, without further ado, I think we'll start the first session. It's the uh, traditional binational update session. And the first speaker is Felicia McNaughty. She's here to present uh, on behalf of Global Affairs Canada on the binational plan. Felicia is a senior policy analyst with, uh, in Ottawa with uh, Global Affairs Canada and uh, uh, works and is holding in the lead role uh, for Canada on the Green Lake of the Woods so far. Felicia? Thanks, Todd. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here on behalf of Global Affairs Canada. Um, my job here today is to give you all an update with respect to uh, well, the work we've been undertaking since the Government of Canada's announcement uh, last August with respect to the five and a half million for science research in the Lincoln Woods Basin. So just to recap what our process has been, it's, it's been going on for a few years. So as you all know, in January 2015, uh, the IGC provided governments, Canadian and U.S. governments, uh, with a water quality plan of study, and we started in that spring a, a binational review of the recommendations uh, from the IGC. The conclusion we came to at that time was that the science recommended in the, in the plan of study is, of course, of great value, but, but not all of it was critical at the time to support priority decision-making and action by governments. Uh, we agreed that the most pressing issue facing Lake the Woods is, is the algae problem. So what we did from the Canadian side, uh, knowing that there was already quite a bit of work happening um, in Minnesota, was that the water quality plan of study served as the foundation for the selection of priority research and action, which was agreed to binationally, to be undertaken. So no new, no new science projects have been identified. All the Canadian work that's being undertaken is drawn from the water quality plan of study. Um, the baseline monitoring of water quality will also include parameters <clears throat> which would contribute to the assessment of the threats posed by aquatic invasive species and the effects of, of mining. Um, and there are also other programs at the federal and provincial levels and state level in place to address uh, the AAS issue that are included in this initiative. So I'm sure a question, of course, is always how is this approach by national in nature? Uh, so We've had very close collaboration uh, federally, so for us, Global Affairs Canada and State Department, um, EPA, both Washington and Region 5, and Environment and Climate Change Canada, as well as working very closely with our sub-national partners, uh, which include Minnesota, Manitoba, Ontario, uh, Red Lake, Van Tribe, and more, rec and more recently, um, Grand Council Treaty 3. Um, to date, a lot of the science coordination has been happening through directly from Environment Canada with the IMA and the Technical Advisory Committee um, as a, a mechanism to talk about what's already going on and, and how we're going to work. We can work together. And then we've had discussions ongoing with a number of stakeholders, which include Indigenous groups, um, other agencies, and of course the International Joint Commission as well. Uh, and these discussions have been focusing on the path forward to ensure that there is collaboration and cooperation in the binational world. So where are we now? Uh, since the public meeting in Kenora in August, our focus has really been on the science. So for the Canadian side, uh, the funding is over four years. We're just coming up to the end of, of year one. Our fiscal year works April 1st to March 31st. So we've been really focusing on, on that science coordination and, and moving that forward. Um, as already mentioned, you know, we have another about of stakeholders we're dealing with, so, and so those discussions are ongoing. So we speak federally, and then we also speak, are speaking regularly with our sub-federal partners, as well as with the IGC. Um, what those discussions have focused on is the government's thinking on the path forward. So that includes mapping out possible roles and responsibilities for potential coordination uh, mechanisms, uh, coordination assessment of science, coordination of actions with respect to achieving long-term outcomes of pithing. Although we have not yet finalized rules and responsibilities, uh, we, are, we are getting close. Um, we had really good discussions yesterday and today with with both groups of the IMA, the TAC and the working group, as well as the uh, International Union of Watership Board. And tomorrow, hopefully, if she, 
her claims able to land. My colleague from Environment Canada will lead a panel session um, to walk you through the science work and the linkages of that work with uh, Minnesota and the U.S. Public. So what are our goals? Um, what we envision, as I already mentioned, we still need to finalize all the roles and responsibilities, but we envision an active role for the IMA TAC with respect to science coordination, um, an active role for the working group in identifying synergies, and an active role for the IGC's watershed board with respect to tracking, evaluating, consulting, and providing feedback to governments on the implementation of the science and policy objectives. So we'll be focusing first on developing eco ecosystem objectives and targets and then on implementation efforts. As I mentioned right now, we're focusing primarily on the science. So our next steps to continue these conversations and finalize roles and responsibilities. And these goals will be, uh, I'm going to say, by the August meetings that take place in public consultations that happen on the margins of the board meeting. Uh, potentially even sooner, as we will confirm roles and responsibilities. Um, and draft, draft a plan on the way before for the longer term. Um, we expect to have a number of opportunities to provide public updates. Um, Environment and Climate Change Canada is working to organize, hopefully on the margins of, of field work, um, a public meeting where it will give an opportunity for them to update you on what, what science they're undertaking. Um, and as well, as I just mentioned, during the uh, public meetings that take place on the margins of the IGC watershed boards in the meetings. And then of course, last but not certainly not least, is being here at this watershed forum is another opportunity for us to provide updates on the So that's uh, quickly sort of where we've come in the last few months with respect to coordination. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody as well who's in this room, who played, who's played a key role in helping us move forward as much as we have in the last few months. The cooperation and collaboration and coordination has been very, very much appreciation. The attention that's given to uh, when we, we seek input and have conversations, it's, it's always a great turnaround and, and really productive conversations and helpful. So thank you to everybody in this room too, as well. So thanks very much. Thank you.